Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master Asarog, the Eternal. For what's going to be part three of the binary cube matrix. Uh, this video I'm making shortly after the previous video, but the reason I'm doing it is because I discovered something shortly after releasing that. It's just amazing. And what it does, it takes the idea that I've been showing with these videos, how it shows perfect balance and symmetry, and it actually now takes it up to the next level and actually sh shows real world application of the world that we live in. It's amazing. And, and here's what it is. All right, here's the Yggdrasil structure. This is a 2D representation of a 3D cube, but it does something in 2D form that it could never do in 3D. Uh, if you recall from the previous video, uh, I said that uh, this one here in this triangle shape, which um, shows the faces of the cube. These six numbers show the faces of the cube. Well, this one, as an example, you can't tell by looking at this which plane of the cube it belongs on. It could either be the top or the rear side. Well, the answer is it's both. It's both at the same time. This structure here, in this configuration, in 2D form, is showing two cubes in one. And they are offset by 90 degrees. Now, why is that number so important, 90 degrees? Because we see this in the world that we live in um, via uh, electromagnetism. I want to show you some examples right now of how that works. So this is a cube. It's offset by 90 degrees. It's two cubes in one. Okay, now, now these images here come from Ken Wheeler. So this is inspired by Ken Wheeler. He's a great channel. Check him out. Okay, what this is here, this is a torus... Uh, in purple. The, the purple shape is a torus, okay, and the shape in blue is a hyperboloid. And these are inverse aspects together. They work, they're two aspects of the same thing that work together, okay. And what the uh, hyperboloid represents is uh, centripetal convergence, and they're going to the center point, which is counter space, just like the zero nine point in the cube. So the hyperboloid represents centripetal convergence, it's going to the center. And the torus represents centrifugal divergence, which is the expansion aspect of, of that. So this is what this is. This rep represents that. Now, uh, Ken Wheeler shows this too, and he shows it with a circle around it. The part that I added myself was the square around it, because um, you know the, the reason why Walter Russell uses cubes, the, the cube sphere model is because the reason why it's a cube is because what happens when the spheres expand and, and meet other spheres, eventually they compress into perfect cubes because they're perfectly balanced. Or if they're perfectly balanced, they'll make perfect cubes. It's just compression because the void space, when the spheres hit, you have to fill that void. And when it does so, it compresses to form perfect cubes because of perfect balance. That's why it's a cube. Okay, that's why it's a cube sphere model. And this is why I, I put that square around that like that. Now what this is over here, this model I got from him too, but this is actually from a man named Charles Proteus Steinmetz, who is a genius. And if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't have working models and examples of Tesla's work, because he was the guy who perfected Tesla's ideas, Charles Proteus Steinmetz. And, he, and, and what he says how uh, the uh, workings of uh, electricity work are this. Uh, the two little black circles represent the wires or the conductor, okay? And the circular um, dots in blue represent the uh, magnetic field, okay? And the purple lines represent what is called the dielectric field, okay? And, and those are another 90 degree ratio of each other. So the magnetic field and the dielectric field are 90 degrees to each other, and those combine to form what we know as electricity. Okay, so that's according to them. And this is, you know, this is the way that the greats who gave us all of our grid and all of the stuff we have today describe electricity. See, once Einstein came onto the scene, the world of Einstein, they really destroyed science. And, and ever since then, science, in all of its facets, all phases, it's just become completely ridiculous bullshit. And and this is what this represents. So this is how electricity works according to them. It's the dielectric field and magnetism combine to form electricity. And this is another example of 90 degree offsets that is shown in this cube here. 
Now another aspect, um, a, a person made a comment on a video of my Spanky shut up, shut the fuck up. A person made a comment on a video of mine uh, the other day. Uh, I think it was the first part of the series where I said there's no such thing as an electron. Well, I misspoke. What I should have said is there's no physical object called an electron. What an electron is, is a uh, etheric field perturbation, just like a photon. And what this represents is a uh, light wave, with, and that's comprised of transverse, um, transverse waves and uh, longitudinal waves. And you see the transverse and the spirals, and the uh, transverse, uh, the, uh, the uh, longitudinal is a straight line. And these lines below are the compressions and rarefactions of the longitudinal wave. And the compressions here are circled in green, and that is what science thinks is a photon. Because there's no physical part particle called a photon or an electron. What, what it is is really a compression in the longitudinal wave, and they think that that's a physical particle because they think everything is physical particles. And that's what that is, a uh, photon. And a good example that came from Ken Wheeler again of how ridiculous the idea of a photon is because you take a light bulb, the ordinary light bulb, and that's a sealed vacuum chamber. And they're trying to say that photons escape out of that. It's fucking impossible because there's a vacuum. Nothing can get out of it. That's why it's a vacuum. So it, what, what it is is the same thing as an electron. It's an etheric field perturbation. And, a, and another example of an etheric field perturbation is a magnet. So when you take magnets and they ha have this field, this, this you know, this you know, spongy thing in the middle that, that, so they won't go together. Well, that's an etheric field perturbation. That's not physical particles, that's just the etheric field perturbation. So this is it. This is what this is showing with the cube. This is two cubes in one, 90 degrees offset, and we see the examples in the real world via electricity and magnetism with 90 degree offsets and 90 degree offsets. Okay, now I just want to get back to the um, the aspect of the, the, all the stuff, the cube, uh, the uh, cube, the single digit code, and the symmetry it produces, and how beautiful it is. Because there's some key examples I missed. Okay, now what this is, there's two cubes, remember. So, over here is a code that the single digit code reveals. You got the uh, organic string of numbers 1 through 9, and then you got the code next to it that's 136, 163, and then 199. Okay, now when you add those together, it, it reveals. 2, 5, then 9, and then 5, 2, then 9. Another e equally symmetrical number system. And then the last one is 8, 8, 9. And then you add this becomes 7. Yeah, this becomes 7. Then you add the 8 and 8, it becomes 16. And that reduces to 7. So it gives you 7, 7, 7. And all the 7, 7, 7 is, is the cube faces in pairs. It's because the cube has 6 faces, but that's made of 3 pairs of 7. So that's what we're seeing here, 7, 7, 7. And the five, and, the, and, and this represents the, the uh, two cubes in one joined together. When you add the triangles together, this is two cubes in one, and that reveals a five, five, five configuration. So five, five, five is just three pairs of fives in a cube. But now you might be wondering, how the fuck is a five bigger than the seven when it's a lower number? Well, what's seven times two? Fourteen. What is fourteen reduced to? Five. So seven, the 14 represents two cubes, re reduction to a five, that's why the five is there for that. So it's showing that. So it's also showing, in this, these two examples, here's the two structures, it's showing actually three cubes here. So what we have is 777 seven, seven represents just one cube, the 555 five, five represents the two cubes joined together as one, and you add five and seven, that becomes 12. What is 12 reduced to? Three. So we've got three cubes represented by the five and the seven, and the 12, which adds to 12, which is the cube, we all know the 12, yeah. and then 12 reduces to 3 uh, for that. And what's a cube? What is a cube? A cube is just a perfectly balanced aspect of three dimensions, height, width, and depth. And, and uh, what is height, width, and depth? 3. So this is, again, it, all, the perfect symmetry of all this. And 12 times 3 is 36. 36. Okay, now another beautiful aspect, too, I want to point out, too. Oh, I want to get back to the photon thing again real quick. I forgot this. Okay, now, what happens on this, on this uh, the two cubes in one structure, okay? Remember, this separates, the, it, like this upper structure becomes 12, the lower structure becomes 12, and over here, the numbers that aren't used in these faces are 5 and 7, which happen to be the faces of both cubes, okay? But th that also adds to 12. Well, this is showing 
the aspect of the photon in the electron not being a, a physical particle. So we have the um, proton, which is physical, the neutron, which is physical, and the electron, which is there, it, it, has a, a, it, it has a real signature in reality, but it's not physical, and that's represented by this 12 here. So it's, it's so beautiful and perfect how that works. And that also has a 1-2 ratio, where the 12 represents the electron that's there but not there, and the physical aspect of the cube is, of the, the, of the two cubes is the 24. And we see this again with the expansion of the cube frame, which expands by 24 each frame. Okay, which reduces to a 6 for the 6 of the cube. Okay, now, one more thing too with this. This 5 and 7 aren't used in, this two, in, in the uh, two cube structures, and that's the faces of each cube. But on the single cube, you got six faces, and there's two numbers that aren't being used, 7 and 8, okay? So the 5 and 7 add to 12 to reduce to a 3. The numbers not being used in a single cube are 7 and 8, which reduce to a 6. So we're now we're seeing 3, 6 separation here. Back down here, the 7, 7, 7, 5, 5, 5, you add 7, 7, 7, which is 21, which is the cube dimensions, again. That reduces to a 3. The 5, 5, 5 becomes 15, which is 6. What's 6 two, but two 3s? So a singular is 3, the double is 6 for a 3, 6 separation. Now when you, um, when you take these numbers and uh, m multiply them, 7 times 7 times 7 reduces to a 1, and 5 times 5 times 5, 5 reduces to an 8. And that gives you an 8 and 1. But this configuration also shows every other number of 2 because when you add the uh, 6 and the 8, that reduces to a 5. And when you add the 3 and the 1, that reduces to a 4 for a 4, 5. But if you cross add them, uh, 8 and 3 is uh, 2. Um, 8 and 3 becomes 11, then 2. And then 15 and 1 is a 7. So we're seeing every single number in the single digit code represent, represented in the machinations of the. Uh, two cube structures here. So just amazing and beautiful how this all works and the beautiful symmetry. Let me just check the time real quick. I'm trying to keep these under 20 minutes. Beautiful. I got plenty of time. I got plenty of time again and I think I'm... This is actually a reshoot. I just didn't like the first video. Uh, so I'm reshooting this again because there was a lot I missed in the first video that I uh, forgot to add. But we're seeing the we're seeing the aspect of just beautiful, perfect symmetry in these structures. It's just glorious. Um, and again, so I'll quickly recap. So this is a structure that is showing two cubes in one that you couldn't get in 3D. So in a 3D cube, if you, like if you take a dice, you, you, you wouldn't get this. This only shows up in 2D. And it shows two cubes as one, they're 90 degrees offset, and this 90 degree offset shows up in the in our world via electromagnetism. It's just glorious and beautiful. And you see all the other symmetrical aspects that go along with it. And this, this is amazing too, how the, you got the proton and the neutron. And coincidentally enough, a neutron, as soon as a neutron separates from the proton mass, it almost immediately becomes another proton. So there's really no such thing as a... So this goes back to the analogy of, in Osron Tower Spiral 9, I talk about how the proton is the female aspect, the neutron is the child, and the electron is the masculine aspect. Well, this is exactly plays in line with that, because as soon as the, the neutron separates from the proton mass, it becomes another proton. So the child, so the mother-child analogy for the proton and neutron is perfect. And the electron is perfect for the masculine aspect, because the masculine aspect, or the uh, electrical aspect, is really an illusion anyway. You know, that, so that's why they say duality is really an illusion because the, ele the masculine or uh, electrical aspect is an illusion. And uh, so that's that. All right, I think I'm going to wrap this up. I think I got everything in here again this time. And I, I'm actually coming in under time from the last video. So thank you and namaste.